But did you ever imagine this kind of success in the theater when you came here almost 35 years ago from Winnetka, Illinois, to New York City? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How does it compare? I what think, you expected you know, and what you've I'll achieved? I'll say my father knew it. My father always claimed. Father's always knew. I know. He's, he always claimed that I would, when he said, oh, from the first day I laid eyes on you in the hospital, I knew you were going to be a great dramatic actress. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. He didn't mention musical, <laughs> but that's what he always claimed. Isn't that funny? I don't know. Did you want to be an actress and a singer since you were a little kid? No. And that's another thing that's really interesting because... I think that really informs what, really what I'm doing up on the stage in Grey Gardens. I know that when I was little, I didn't really dream about being famous or being an actor or an entertainer or anything like that. But I would always want to step inside another human and find out what that was like to be them. I remember there was a, a time, I was very young, probably five years old, and apparently, according to my mother, I had seen somebody crippled in a wheelchair. Well, the next day, I spent the entire day in a chair in the kitchen. And my mother would just kind of walk around and be very patient with me. I was like, <laughs> how's it going? You know, she's washing the dishes or whatever. And when I had to go to the bathroom, I remember crawling on my hands that my legs were completely useless because I wanted to know what that felt like. So that's really kind of, and then and in third grade, I remember we, we were the pioneers and we were studying pioneers and I think I slept on a sled for like a month on the porch <laughs> and like went to deliver a, a letter in the mailbox with just a shawl. It was snowing outside and I wanted to know what that felt like. So I think that's probably what, I didn't know at the time I was, that's what I was yeah. becoming, but it was, I guess, part of my destiny, but that's really you know, more what I, I guess spent my... your father my... read the signs. <laughs> I guess he <laughs> did. Sooner than you did. In 1998, you were in, living in L.A., in a mm -hmm. big fancy house, driving a big fancy car, yeah, from what Cadillac. I read. Um, you know, the movie yeah. star's a dream. Why did you decide to come back to New York City? Well, I think I w had stayed too long at the fair. Mm -hmm. That's what was happening. Um, there was a couple of things that, ha that happened that seemed at the time... Um, very crippling, but I think they were ended up helping me at the end because, what? well, I had an agent that told me basically that I was over the hill. Oh, um, and so, uh, but now I thank him because I got out. Well, we know? thank him. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got rid of that agent, by the way. Oh, but <laughs> thank God. Thank God. But anyway, so that, that's, that's basically um, what happened. Uh, the, that I think I was being defined, really, by things that were out of my control. Mm -hmm. My age, uh, my TVQ, mm -hmm. you know, all those things yeah. that I had no control over. I, I've read that you, you said that the older you get, the more you, you need to move east. The farther east you should go, <laughs> yes. Well, I'll end up in Hong that? Kong. <laughs> Why is that? The theater is different, I'm, well, I'm I guessing. Well, I think there's a longer lifespan, yeah, mm -hmm. in the theater. You can age gracefully. But aren't you concerned that the same kind of... Uh, simple-minded mentality that ruled over Hollywood, that ruled over this agent of yours, might be creeping into the theater. You know, well, we want you know, 17 to 34-year-olds to, to come see these things. So we want, mm -hmm. you know, a 30-year-old person playing the part of a 55-year-old person, that kind of thing. You don't think that that's a concern? No, because I think this is really, um, mm, it's a different galaxy, really, mm -hmm. uh, performing in the theater. Um, I think that's it takes a different muscle, yeah. really. And I think a lot of people that um, are, you know, there is this sort of false perception that if you're a movie star, you can succeed in the theater, and that's really not the case. Well, that's been happening more and more. Yeah. More of these celebrities yeah. are being given starring roles mm -hmm. in plays, some of whom don't have much experience on the stage. Some critics say don't have mm -hmm. much talent for the stage. Mm -hmm. Why is that happening if, well, if this is a different see, galaxy? Well, um, because I think there's a, just a sense that um, it's sort of a sense of entitlement, I guess, in a mm. way that, you know, that, that sort of entitles you to be able to do that, although it's it's not necessarily the case. But but I think it's okay because, you know, people, it's getting people to the theater, and I think that's really the, the main thing about that. I don't think it's going to take away from great art. I, mm. I just don't think that's no. possible. The first time I ever saw you was in Saturday Night Live. Mm. The more I read about you, the more odd 
that seems to me. <laughs> well, How did you end eclectic. up then? It's my career has been really, yeah. really eclectic, you know, which has really been great. I haven't been pigeonholed, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that's good. Um, how did you end up in Saturday Night Live? I had just come off the road playing Camelot, uh, doing playing Guinevere in Camelot with Richard Burton. Wow, that must have been something. That else. was amazing, yeah. And then when Richard Burton got ill, Richard Harris came on and oh, did it. So I did. It. I got to be with both of those greats, and that was such a wonderful experience. Well, let, let um, me digress. What was that experience like? Uh, what were these guys like? Well, you know, you know, you just basically died and went to heaven. Really? You know? Yeah. They were kind and, and, and gentlemanly to oh, a young actor? Yeah, and so much fun to be with on stage. So playful and so, really? yeah. Very Both childlike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, no, Richard Harris. <laughs> so great. He would always make the show like a half an hour longer than it was already <laughs> three hours, you know? He'd start borrowing from the movie and go on these long <laughs> soliloquies and be like, come on, you know? But he was so much fun, and yeah. Richard Burton was just heaven. Yeah. So it was well, it was such a great experience. That's yeah, he was always playing tricks on you, and just fun loving, and just mm, the greatest. So, so I came off the road from mm -hmm. doing that, and then I'd gotten a call. I guess somebody had, I had auditioned for that TV series called Love Sydney that ended up being yeah, with Tony sure. Randall yeah, that sure, Susie Kurtz ended up mm -hmm. doing. But I uh, auditioned for it and sort of did like a screen test for that. Mm -hmm. And so Dick Ebersole uh, had seen, who was the producer of Saturday Night Live, uh, he had seen the tape of it. And he felt that there was an honesty about my performance that really attracted mm -hmm. him to me. So he brought me in. Hey, Petey. Where's the can? It's, uh, it's across the lobby and down the stairs, Mom. Okay. Let's when I read uh, former cast members of Saturday Night Live talk about their experiences, they're all grateful that they went through it. Most of them yeah. are. But I haven't heard anyone say or have read anyone say that, uh, that it was an enjoyable experience. Apparently, it was pretty rough. It was, that, was it rough for you? Behind the yeah. scenes, you know, elbowing each other for airtime and... Rough. It was rough, I think, mostly because I did not have a high confidence level mm -hmm. at all. I mean, I hear I came from, you know, wearing long gowns and slippers and wigs, you know, mm -hmm. coming from that theater world, which I had c more confidence in, and then coming to this world of stand-up, oh, my God. it was, And it was really a man's world, too. Really? Yeah. The women were not held in high regard. Really? But again... Like I'm saying, it was a lot, it was mostly to do with me. Mm -hmm. I did not have a high level of confidence mm -hmm. there. So I felt really the greatest contribution that I made to Saturday Night Live was in the singing, yeah, actually. I remember that. Let's talk about your family. Now, you live in a big house in Maplewood. You, your, your mother still lives with you? Yes. And mm -hmm. your husband and your mm -hmm. three kids and something like nine, like nine. Three dogs, three cats, uh, a guinea pig, and a fish. Now, that, that sounds like perfect suburban life. How do you adjust that to the incredible, incredibly rigorous life of a Broadway actor? Well, I think that's the hardest part of all, really. How do you do it? I'm not... I think that's probably my biggest challenge as a human being is finding balance in my life and in my work. Now, they range from ages 9, nine 10, and 13. Now, that, those mm -hmm. are rough ages. It's really how do you find those moments where you can be present when you're with the family mm -hmm. and not be, you know, on the phone making deals or, you know, yeah. talking about whatever is happening on that other, in that other realm. And so that's really the challenge is with the time I have, which is so, is so precious and so little, uh, it's about quality. Now, your three children are adopted. Mm -hmm. Was that an easy decision for you from the start? Well, I think um, it just, again, it's, it's all sort of divinely orchestrated because uh, I was not able to get pregnant, and I decided not to... There was, a, there was this cross in the roads in my life where... It was either take the drugs, you know, yeah. and go that route. Yeah. And I decided not to do that. I didn't want to play God with whatever my fate was. And I think really what I 
came to understand, I felt that, that my self-worth was sort of wrapped up in this ability to get pregnant. And when I couldn't get pregnant, I felt worthless. And then I realized that I could be a mother um, anyway. And that's really what my heart's desire was. I wanted to be a mother. So if it wasn't meant to come through me, then I, I could still be a mother. It was an understanding of that. Then it was like the heavens opened up and boom, you know. Now your three kids are of different races. Yeah. How, how has that experience been for the family? Well, it's a very expanding experience because um, it's like God opens your heart and your minds and your just awareness of your relationship to the world because the child who doesn't you know who who has brown skin and brown eyes and curly hair or you know Asian eyes and you know it, it doesn't look anything like you and yet in your heart and in your soul in your spirit in the very core of you you are eternally connected. It's your child. Mm -hmm. So that's really, it's not defined, family's not defined by flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Family is defined by soul mm -hmm. and spirit. And it's sort of soul reunification, really. Mm -hmm. um, I feel as though we've been together many lives mm -hmm. and that we are coming back in this configuration together. And so it also makes you, I think, aware of the suffering in the world. For example, you know, with the war that we're in right now, um, and you look at the faces of these people that, you know, for my example, for the general public is not, doesn't look like our culture, our, doesn't look like a part of who we are. But then you look at the faces of the children and I see, well, that's my child. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Now, um, do you already know what you're going to be doing after Grey Gardens? We're working at the makeup counter at Bloomingdale's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you can do after this, uh -huh. really. I don't know how you top this. Now, one last question. How are you going to celebrate when you win the Tony for, oh, <laughs> for, <laughs> for Grey Gardens? Well, you know, I don't Again, you know, I, I don't want to have any expectations, you know. Um, I just think it would be, if it happens, it will be, you know, the crowning jewel on, like, a most magnificent experience, really. I don't know much more that you can add to this. I mean, I've already got the Sunday, you know. It's just the cherry on the top, you know.